What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master 1 and welcome to my former building guide for this month's Hall of Forms featuring female Lear, Chloe, Celine, and Rearmed Alfred. We're gonna be having skills up to the Legendary Mila Lear banner, so unfortunately Distant Bonus Doubler is not gonna be present there, and we do have female Lear as part of this Hall of Forms, and she's still a pretty nice sort of infantry unit, even though the competition is really intense in that class. So she has got Libe Hashion as her preferred weapon, which does give her minus and special cooldown, and a sort of turn if her HP is at or above 25%, then she's able to give out the charge status to herself and the support partner in three spaces of her. So back when she came out, there were not a lot of ways of giving out the charge status, but now there are definitely other units who can provide the support, so it's not really as unique, but still something that she can be used for. And then for herself in the combat, you are able to get plus 5 to all of these stats, and you also inflict minus X debuff on foe speed and defense, depending on the number of allies with distinct game titles in three spaces of fur multiplied by four and then added by four. So this does allow her ceiling to be a bit higher compared to a lot of the sword infantry units from back then. So it is still going to be helping you be fast. And then she has got the dodge damage reduction up to 40%. So this is built into the weapon and you can stack this up with other damage reduction sources. But nowadays, all of these speed-based damage reduction skills are going to be completely pierceable. A lot of the good nukes just have damage reduction piercing, so it's not going to be all that reliable to use her for the tanking. She can definitely do it, but still, it's a bit of an old playstyle, and now pretty much any kind of new and good Omni tank has got flat damage reduction, which unfortunately female Alir lacks. So she does come with a tier 4 damage reduction skill in her slot B, and it's not going to be too much of a difference getting other variants of the skill, so you can try and get some other rare and premium options. And for her special, you should definitely try and get no quarter. You can try and get godlike reflexes, but like I said, tanking with her is not going to be as reliable as before. So focusing on your nuking and the damage reduction piercing with no quarter is something you can do. And she is going to be having better mobility than a lot of the infantry units because of the charge status. So you can take advantage of that and run no quarter. And then for slaughter, you can get attack speed finish for. So this is going to be giving you the healing and the true damage. And it goes well with the pledge skill that we're going to be running. And it also works with the proximity condition of her weapon. So she's going to be able to make good use out of this. And if you really want to tank with her, then attack speed prime is going to be an option that you can run on her. And that way you can get the distant counter effect. And for the slot B, you can try and get potent so that you can get the potent follow up attack. And you're still going to be able to get some damage reduction. So this way she can be a bit bulky and also function better as an offensive nuke. And you can also try and get some other sloppy skills like physical all follow up and speed defense tempo 4 if you want to get the damage reduction piercing on the hits where you don't trigger no quarter. So this is going to be giving you the effects which she lacks in her weapon and the damage reduction piercing is extremely valuable. Still potent can be a good option but with the plaid skill you can definitely try and get the tempo skill so that you can get the null guard. And for the slot C, attack speed pledge is a pretty good premium option you can run to get the visible buffs and the special charges status. So it is going to be helping you trigger no quarter a lot easily. There are definitely other options depending on your team. So you can try and get infantry null fall of 4. So this way you can give herself the null fall up status and the order status. So it can help you trigger the prime skill if you're going to be getting that. Time pulse 4 can also work. And because she's going to be functioning as a melee nuke, you can try and run inside attack speed which is going to be functioning in the player phase. So by utilizing charge with her weapon, you can go in and just nuke the enemies and hopefully she's able to survive with all of the damage reduction that she's stacking up. Chloe is a lance flyer and just like Alir, this is a very competitive class, but Chloe is able to stand out because of her weapon in Dreaming Spear. So this gives her minus and special cooldown and then she can get plus 5 to all of her stats and these are visible stats. So these actually help you with the Pegasus flight with the ploy skills and she just easily gets this with her weapon and she's also able to get extra effects in the combat if she's on a team with two allies in a support partner pair so this allows her to get the guaranteed follow-up attack and she can also inflict guard effect on the foe in the combat and then she gets true damage based on 20 percent of her resistance and then finally she gets the flat damage reduction based on 20 percent of her resistance so this flat damage reduction is what makes uh chloe into a pretty nice lance flyer because it's not going to be a pierceable source of damage reduction and this is the reason why Chloe is still a pretty good lance flyer 
And like I said before, correcting the ploy skills and the other skills with the visible stats that she can get is gonna be good. We've got a lot of slot B options that you can run with her weapon and the flat damage reduction in her weapon is gonna be making her as a unique lance flyer. So if you're trying to get some premium skills, then it is gonna be helping you and you can also get Arcane Xiang on Chloe because Rion Alfred is in the Hall of Forms and they've always explicitly stated this, but it wasn't really possible before, but it is possible now. So you can just try and get that weapon for fun and for her special no quarter is going to be a must have because you need the damage reduction piercing nowadays and attack speed prime can be the slotty scale that you can run on her so that she can get the distant counter effect with support units and this is going to be going well with her tanking playstyle. You can also run distant attack speed solo if you don't really want to run a prime skill and get the visible status effect so it's an alternate option and for slot B at low investment guard bearing 4 can work out and it certainly does work well with the true damage reduction in her weapon, but it is going to be a bit troublesome against a lot of the common damage reduction piercing we have got. So if you do have a slightly merged Chloe or if you're going to be investing a bit more into her, then Wyvern Rift is going to be the best lobby skill you can get because this actually gives you the flat damage reduction, which is not pierceable like guard bearing. And it also makes it really hard for the opponent to double Chloe, which given her speed is going to be a good thing. So I'm going to be trying to get this skill on my Chloe because I do have it close to a plus merge Chloe on my main account. And at that kind of investment, Wyvern Rift is going to be functioning really well. It's a shame that we don't have Pegasus Rift, but this is still a pretty good skill that you can run on her because of the defense that you can get. And with the support, you're definitely able to make this skill work out. Then for the slot bay, you can try and run Rain Snap and you can get the extra movement as a status. And this is going to be working well with Prime. But if you're trying to run some other warping skills, then Soaring Guidance or Guidance 4 are going to be your best friends. And if you're trying to make use of her Visible Resistance, then Attack Speed Ploy can be the skill that you can run. And if you're going to be giving her Soaring Echo as the Attune skill, then you pretty much want to choose between Rain Snap or Attack Speed Ploy. This is the tanking build for Chloe, but if you want to go the offensive route and function with her in the player phase, then you can go with Flared Sparrow and Aerial Maneuvers, which is a standard build on a lot of flyers. Chloe is definitely standing out with her tanking potential with the true damage reduction, but if you want to go the offensive route and if you already have the other tanking skills, then this could be something you can try and grab. And for the slots, you can run Soaring Guidance or Guidance 4, but the ploy skills are always going to be a good option for Chloe given her really high resistance. Rearmed Alfred is the first rearmed unit to be present in Hall of Forms ever and he's one of the first rearmed units and he does come with Arcane Xiang. So this is going to be giving you minus and special cooldown and also plus 5 to all of these stats, the guaranteed follow-up attack and the follow-up denial which is going to be susceptible to enemies null follow-up and then if whoever initiated move to a different space then you are able to get special charge per attack. So this is going to be helping you trigger no quarter really easily and also triggering Gale Force. And he does have an exclusive slotty skill in Self Improver. So this is going to be giving him visible plus 10 attack, plus 5 speed and plus 20 defense at cost of minus 5 resistance. And this skill also gives you guard effect in the combat. So it looks like an insane skill, but it's really not. It's a pretty tame skill, all things considered. It just gives him a lot of visible stats, which is going to be making him a magnet for a lot of the debuffs and it is going to be helping you AoE nuke but you don't really get any kind of true damage on your AoE specials and as it is as a cavalry unit getting the pulses for pre-charging AoE special is not the easiest compared to infantry units and a big thing why Alfred is going to be not as good of a unit for a forma pick is because despite being a rearmed unit you're not going to be able to inherit skills from him and I mean you're never able to inherit skills from a forma unit so that stays the same but you're not going to be able to do it even on a rearmed unit. So it is going to be defeating the purpose of a rearmed unit and it may also break your Alfred if you're trying to get the merges on him and duplicate a lot of skills and chain fodder. We do have info about it from the data mine so unless they change something this is going to be a thing that you'll have to keep in mind so it's not going to be giving you too much value. Make sure to check my pinned comment down below in case there is any kind of change to maybe fix this. Or update it so that it can provide you some value. Maybe in the future we get a fake channel or in the upcoming update they might change something. So just look for the pinned comment before you redeem your 
for my Alfred just so that you're up to date. So unfortunately, it's not going to be giving you as much value as you would think a rearmed unit would give you. And even after knowing that, if you still want to get Alfred, then these are the skills you can try and get. So no quarter is going to be helping you nuke with the special charges of Arcane Xiang. And you can also run Attack Defense Prime as an alternate fun skill, even though you're probably just going to be running his exclusive skill. You can also try and get Flared Sparrow and then for the slot B, there are not a lot of options for slow cavaliers. So lull attack defense is one of the few options that you can try and get. And if you want to get the pre-combat damage, then Assassin's Strike is going to be a good skill to pick up. And for the slot, say alarm attack defense is going to be the best slot C skill to get because you can get the Canto 1 status. And Fatal Smoke 4 is also an option if you want to stop the healing and the non-special miracle effects. So even as a one-off copy, he's not going to be all that tempting because he doesn't really have access to a lot of skills to begin with. And then you also don't get the value out of him as a rearmed unit. So unless you're a big Alfred fan, you're not really going to be trying to get him. Saline is a green infantry mage who can provide some support with her joyous tome. So this gives her minus some special cooldown and in sort of turn, if she's within 3 spaces of an ally, then she's able to heal 7 HP to herself and the allies in 3 spaces. And then she's also able to get plus 5 to all of these stats in the combat. She deals 2 damage based on X multiplied by 5 and this can go up to max 15. And she also gets X multiplied by 15 as the damage reduction and it can go up to 45%. So it is going to be depending on the number of allies with more than or equal to half health in 3 spaces. So it is going to be helping her in the combat but not really as we definitely need a lot more effects for a nuke nowadays and she's mainly going to be functioning as a support unit by providing that healing at serve turn and also by providing the 7 HP healing after the combat to both herself and the allies in 3 spaces. So back when she came out she was actually a pretty unique unit because she was able to give this kind of healing to the allies but then we got Gatekeeper with his weapon refine and he does that supportive role a lot better because he has got a detailed report which is going to be blocking the warping which is really really valuable so saline is going to be facing competition from those units and we also have arcane charmer now as an arcane staff which you can give to any kind of staff unit and then they're going to be able to give you that post combat healing so unfortunately saline is not really all that unique compared to when she came out but if you're trying to build her up then you can try and get flare as the best special for a mage so definitely don't miss out on that and you can run attack speed finish as the slot is skill because it is going to be working well with her weapon giving you more healing and you can also run magical all follow up in the slot B because damage reduction piercing is really really important and you also get the full null follow up effect and if you're going to be nuking with her then magical null follow up is going to be really important but if you're going to be using her as a support unit then attack speed boost 4 is something you can try and get and if you're not able to get magical null follow up then you can try and get the tempo 4 skill or special spiral 4 just for the damage reduction piercing. For slot C you actually have a lot of options and it depends on your usage and your team. So attack speed pledge could be run so that you can trigger flare a lot easily. But you can also run infantry null follow up or infantry pulse to provide more support. Time pulse 4 is also going to be an option and if nothing else then attack speed oath 4 is also going to be a solid option that you can pick up. And even though she's going to be facing competition for her supportive role She's still going to be giving you that healing in the limited battles using engage roster and if you don't have retents yet then the healing can actually make a pretty big difference. Next month we should be getting a holo farms using heroes roster and I do think that Reed and Fiorm are pretty much logged in because they are scheduled to rerun and it already has like 4 candidates on their colors so they're pretty much going to be in holo forms most likely. Gantra could change for the green color but if they're going to be having a batch like this, then they definitely need some kind of magical unit. So Gantra is going to be able to fill that spot and she's also having a scheduled rerun in May. So there's a chance that we get three legend units in a holoforms. And then for the colorless, they're probably going to be having any other unit. Probably Summer Freya because she is in the Divine Codes. And a lot of times they do put the Divine Codes units in the holoforms. You can click the link on the screen right now to check out my breakdown of this month's weapon refines. And make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because YouTube set boxes seem about as functional as rearmed units as for my units. So that's it all to you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.